Hey there. I am going to attempt to upgrade the brakes on my new 2020 Giant Stance 1 29 incher. Um, everything on here is stock. Um, up front are 180 millimeter disc brakes. The uh, RockShop Fork Recon. It is native uh, for 160 millimeters but they put a bracket on here to be able to hold a 180 millimeter um, and on the rear there's a 160 millimeter um, both front and rear are the standard post mount which I think is a, a spacing of 74 millimeters which um, from what I've learned seems to be a standard um, so I bought a uh, SMRT66 203 millimeter. I'm going to put that on the front end. And if everything goes well, I think um, I can take the 180 millimeter front rotor and the spacing bracket and move that to the rear wheel. So I'll have 203 and 180 in the back if all my parts fit. So, that's what we're going to find out. So, what I got here are some new parts. I've got my Shimano disc brake rotor I just ordered from Jensen. That's the SMRT66 203mm like I said. And then the bracket. This for the front. Is supposed to convert from 160 to 204 and then I got some new pads um, as far as tools as far as I can tell what I'm gonna need is a t25 Torx bit needle nose pliers for the the pads a five millimeter to take the the mounts off of the, the calipers and then I'll have to look it up uh, later but I got a torque wrench there to uh, to get whatever whatever value I need for the bolts on the rotors um, I think it's five newton meters but I can't really remember I have to look it up okay Okay, step one should be remove the front wheel. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. It should be pretty easy on the rock shocks. It's pretty much do a lever on the back and then you find a little groove and you, you spin it. And then there you go. There's your front wheel. Boom. All right, now that I got the wheel off, I'm uh, gonna take the 180 millimeter mm -hmm. rotor off. I've got a power drill with a T25 Torx in there. And gotta set the clutch kinda high. Okay, even higher, put it on drill mode. pretty tight. Alright, there's these little metal Gems. Not really sure what they do, but they're labeled top. Maybe the new one came 
new shims and there you go so this 180 I'm gonna use on the back but I'm gonna clean that up the brand new one haven't opened this yet but let's see what comes in here okay, we got our box we got our rotor Oh, look at that. I see new screws. Some instructions. And then we've got this pretty new rotor. What else do we got in here? All right, nothing. Okay, so looks like the inside doesn't have any writing. The outside has a rotation that goes this way, um, and that is in fact the way it rotates. So we'll set that down. And let's see what's in here. These are our new shims and screws with some fresh Loctite. Okay, and like I said, these are labeled uh, top. So we'll set that down on top, cross two of them. Line our screw up. Let's get it started there. Get the next one started. So these things have little tabs that stick up, it looks like. And as the screw head goes down, it's going to compress that. So probably going to act a little bit of a lock washer to keep it from backing out. Oh, that's exactly what it is to keep it from backing out. So there's little ridges on the, the underside of the, the screw face where it, it mounts there. And the way this rotates, uh, the little tabs it'll kind of like ratchet into place and then it it'll have a hard time backing out all right so just gonna get these lightly started in here going in a crisscross pattern Our star pattern. So it gets down nice and even. Okay. Loosen up the clutch there a bit. Alright, now we'll pause for a second. Okay, so I had to pause there for a second to pull up the instructions to get the torque. And according to Shimano, six bolt type should be two to four newton meters, which is 18 to 35 inch pounds. And let's see here, two to thirty five inch pounds. Uh, wait, what is that? Eighteen to thirty five. Two, thirty three, thirty four. Uh, 
Alright, I'm going with 35. <clears throat> so... Now you try not to touch... We don't want to touch the outside where the brakes are going to catch. Um, we don't want our oil on there apparently. I'll probably give it a nice scrub of, with alcohol after I'm done here. I gotta say, 35 inch pounds, even though that was on the high side. Sure doesn't feel like a lot. Yeah, if I was to go by hand, I, I would have went way more than that. But, they do have Loctite, so... And it sure felt like it was in there a lot harder. But then again, I would have gotten them pretty hot as I was riding. And maybe that does something with the Loctite. Okay, so. That's the rotor. Now on to the next part. Okay, now we're going to pull the old rotors off and you can see there's a spacer here and that's another Shimano spacer um, that takes it from the 160 millimeter to 180. Um, from what I've read I should be able to move this to the back that the front and the back are universal so five millimeter Allen pull that out All right, then we need our new guy, our, what is this, SM-MA-F203P slash P. So this should convert a 160 millimeter to 203. It came with a new set of bolts, um, but I can already see a problem. All right, so this shows up. That helps. So that'll mount like that, and then that should shift the caliper up. And then these bolts should be for the inner piece. I think another person here would help. Hold my caliber out of my way. But I think there's going to be a problem because the bolts I have. I 
I came with here. I don't know. Those, those might not be the right length. I'm gonna need some short bolts for that. Hmm. I think what I can do is, since I'm not quite here yet, but I think I can just steal these. Let's put them on tight. Alright. What exactly is this thing for? What is this clip? Why do I have this clip? I don't know. It might make sense later. I'll have to remember I had it there. But yeah, I think I can probably maybe reuse these on the front. Okay, don't let me forget, I put the clip in the pocket. Clip that I have no idea why it's there. Right. Stealing the bolts from the back should work, right? Yes, no. Let's find out. So going back to the bolts that I got from the rear, because um, that is threaded all the way through, so I think this actually will work. They're probably a little bit longer than I need. But, I think they'll work. Let's test them. Oh yeah. That totally works. Okay. So, do I put the new pads in now? Before I bolt these in? Probably a good idea, huh? So I, I just got these rotors repaired um, at the bike shop a few months ago. Um, but what I'm concerned with, even though these are fairly new, that they might bed in and actually it's kind of looking like one of the pads is almost gone already on this side probably can't see it and this side's got some more room on it but this one looks like it's pretty thin so yeah looks like I was about due for them anyway All right. OK. 
Okay, so all I should really need is needle nose pliers, pull that cotter pin out, and um, put my new pads on, and these came with new cotter pins. So let's check it out. All right. So on the bottom side here, bend this tab up, pull the pin out. Okay, my pliers are. Okay, so these got like a spring on them and they just slide right out. Like so. And then I need to compress the pistons in with something. Um, but yeah, this one's looking thin. Doesn't look like it wore evenly to me. Um, but first thing I should do before anything else is get me a plastic tool so I can compress my pistons in. So, all right, couldn't find plastic, so a wooden carpenter's pencil might do the trick. Let's see here. So just Yeah, you don't want to score these up with anything metal, so this should should do the trick hopefully. Yes, that's good. Looks like it's mostly out of the way. I hear stuff making noises. <laughs> Cut. Now. New pads. Pads or shoes? I don't know. I can't remember. Wow, it came with three cotter pins. Now I'm doing my best not to touch the the surface of the pads. But these are quite a bit thicker. You see the metal and then the resin pad is mounted on the on the steel plate. And just comparing side by side. These do look like they were ready to be replaced all right putting the spring thingy in place pinching those together and then pushing this through Until it lines up. Alright. And then bend that back.
Okay, and then the shorter bolts from the rear that I stole. Okay, that's good. Okay, now we don't want these to be tight yet. We want to leave these kind of loose, actually. And then I also just realized another mistake I made. Which is... Make sure you tighten the inner ones first. Okay, we'll keep those loose. Well, I didn't realize it, but the stock tires and And rims here are pretty light. Okay, again, we don't want to touch the surface of the brakes. Put our axle back through. Tighten this up. seems pretty good to me looks like it's got clearance all right now while squeezing the front brake if you see it moving I'm squeezing the front brake and you're seeing this thing wiggle so by squeezing it um, that centers it now you don't have to give it a death grip but just Squeezing it nice and tight there should get it center. Get these guys good and tight. Okay. So I can hear something rubbing, but it's like one, two, yeah, it's like on one side of the rotor, but I mean, it's very, very minimal. It's running pretty straight right now. And that brake feels nice and tight, like it does brand new, so I really wore through those resin brakes in just a matter of a couple months. And I let these things go for probably about five months, five or, yeah, about five months. And I was down metal to metal and I scored up the original rotors and I ended up buying a brand new 180, a brand new 160 because I scored them up along with the uh, brake pads. But I guess I'm riding enough and I'm going through them. Maybe I won't go through as much now with the bigger rotors. I should have more stopping power, so I shouldn't have to be on them as hard. But we'll see. Alright, that's the front. The front's done. Now to the rear. Alright, rear wheel. So I've never taken the rear off before. 
So it looks like I want to get the chain maybe out of the way. And don't laugh at me because I've never done this before for anybody who's done this a million times. But if you've done this a million times, why are you watching my stupid video? Okay. All right, we're... We're down there. Okay. Now the chain. How am I going to get my chain off? Do I really want it that far off? Maybe I don't want it all the way down. Um. Alright, let's see. So obviously we do that. Then we'll, we'll just spin it. Alright, I got a little, a little nut on the other side that I'm spinning. There's a spring in here. Okay. I got this nut, a funky tapered spring. And like the tiniest axle that holds my whole rear tire up. Wow. Okay. That that just does not seem, <laughs> seem substantial enough. But mechanical engineers, they know what they're doing, right? Okay. Uh, chain. Let me get my chain off. I'll take it off of there. That loosens it. Then what? Hmm. How does one do this? Does the whole derailleur come off? No. Uh, this just go down? Feels like it just goes down. But then where does this go? Oh, the whole derailleur goes down. All right. Sure. Eh. Eh. Yeah, well, I'm never gonna get that back on, but okay. Interesting. All right, rear wheel is off. Okay, rear wheel on the operating table. Um, okay, we're gonna take the the old 160 millimeter rotor off. Yep. That bolt went flying. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> and there's the old 160. But we are upgrading to the 180 that we salvaged from the front. These uh, tabs are going to work anymore. Let me look at them. Um, well, they're still sticking up, so maybe they will. Just getting them kind of started. I still got a good, good amount of Loctite still on them. I think though before I actually do anything, like use these I mean, I'm gonna clean the surface here with either some brake cleaner or maybe some rubbing alcohol. this is but I went to the trouble to get the torque branch out so I'm gonna use it which one did I miss yeah, I got that one is that one Got them. Edit that part out. Yeah, I guess with this, it is pretty tight. So Yes, we got it. All right. The old rotor's in. Now, time to put the caliper on the rear. Okay. Now, Swap these brake pads out. These actually look like they've got some life to them still. Um, yeah, the front definitely wore out sooner than the rear. So straighten out that cotter pin in that's flared out. Pull this guy out. You need to keep that because the ones that come with it aren't long enough. 
that. Yeah. Those still have some life in them, but... I'm gonna go ahead and... Put my new ones on anyway. I uh, got my new ones. Again, don't touch your gross fingers on the surface area. Okay, so the spring goes on the inside like so, and then the other one goes like that, and you can kind of pinch them together. Of course, now that I've gone through that trouble, I realize I didn't compress the brake yet, so I'm going to set that aside get my very expensive carpenter pencil tool push the calipers the pistons so this is a two piston system Oh, I'm wrecking my carpenter pencil. Oh, yep, it's got two ends, so. Okay. All right, guess I'm being a little bit more aggressive this time. Since I know it's got to go a lot. So much for my favorite carpenter's pencil. Okay. Spring still in place. Slide that in. Mm-hmm. He's catching on something. Why don't you go in your hole? Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. All right. We've got its tap -a -roo. Bend the little tab so the pin stays in. Got a good gap there. Okay. Now, now the question is which way does this go? One says up. I'm guessing. So this one shows up and if it was on that one then I think up would be this side which is the furthest away from the center of the axle and you can see this side is thicker than that side. So I think that'll flare this guy up and out. 
that's my theory and then these are the old bolts from the front oh hmm are these gonna be too long what I didn't pay attention to was aha one bolt is longer than the other so put the shorter bolt on the side closest to the axle because that's the thinner side and then the longer bolt up here and then it looks like somebody put this back together. Put some spacers on here too. Because maybe they were way too long. Um, hopefully this works. So I'm just going to make sure that these bolts don't bottom out in the frame. Okay, that one's good. Alright, good. They don't bottom out in the frame. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up. So that these flop around. So when I get the, the wheel back on here, assuming I can figure out how to do it, I can then center it. Okay, how do you do this again? This goes up like this. Um, this. You care about audio? Oh, uh, you can come out. I right. mean, oh, it's not a professional video. All right, well, I'm just heading to the pharmacy, and well, to Safeway. Do you need anything? Um, I don't think so. All right. Okay. I could use a hand here. What do you need? I don't know. What How the it? hell does this go back? Oh. <laughs> uh. Okay. Well, I see that it has to slide up into these little notches. Does that spring loaded? I can't see anything from this angle. Let's see. I think this goes up like this. How oh, is it doing? Well, I mean, you got to get that oh, up. Don't scar up the rotor. Well, you're caught right on the grab actual the, the frame. Chain, grab the chain. It goes up and over the... It goes on this side. Like that? On the inside. It, oh. No, no, come in. I, oh, I see. Gotcha. Hold on. Ah. It's caught. On that. Okay. There. Okay. Something like that. And then this should go. Apparently caught on the frame right, right here. Oh, it's in the caliper. I got to get it centered in the caliper. Come on. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh, this is that. a fucking pain in the ass. Oh, you yeah. got me greasy. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you're gonna need to wash your hands. <laughs> okay. Uh this is not lined up. Oh nope, now it is. Okay. Right. And then the world's saddest axle. Oh my god, it's so tiny. I know, how does this even hold the bike together? Um carbon nanotubes or something. Alright, so that goes through. I guess it helps when you don't have a motor. Yeah. <laughs> Were you in a hurry? <laughs> uh, no, I mean I wasn't in a, in any kind of hurry. I just have to go to the pharmacy. And okay. All right, you can let go. It's in there now. You're gonna have to get yeah, your I'll... chain on that. Oh, good lord. All right, let me find. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your help. Yeah. How the tables have turned. Ha, 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 ha.
It's me getting you greasy. I got the front done. Oh yeah, look at that. It is bigger. It's bigger. Um, yeah. That's your that's your back. Or that was your old front. Now on the back. The yeah, the 180 from the front is Man, now. Those, those parts came fast. You only ordered them what a couple days ago. Yeah, they came. They came quite a bit early. Nice. All right. Oh, very cool. That should help you not plummet to your death down a hill. Maybe. Well, I don't know. We'll see about that. Oh. All right. I'm up to the store. All right. I'll thanks. Be back probably pretty soon. Hello, we got more helpers. We're making a video. Say hello, camera people. I think I got it back on there. Um, I ended up setting it down just so that the weight would hold the tire up, bottomed up into the the mount point since it's slotted, not like the front wheel that just slides directly in. Um, so now I just got to get the brake rotor centered okay all good Jenna help me out what? squeeze this brake for me Hi. keep that squeezed so I have a helper who's gonna center my brakes for me while I tighten them up Hopefully that does the trick. Something felt like it was rubbing now. Okay, let go. Squeeze it. Alright, that should do it. 203 on the front. 180 on the back. So, so I've got brake cleaner somewhere, but I think alcohol will work just fine. That's some isopropyl. Alright, time for a test drive. Test drive, test drive?